So hello everyone and welcome to this uh, keynote session and Q&A session uh, sponsored by HOUT and co-hosted by us, Carry Community. We are proud to welcome HOUT team here who will have a very interesting discussion to share. So stay tuned and enjoy. And also to our extent, you will be able to ask the question using the chat box. So yeah, don't hold back and ask your questions and HOUT team will answer you. So now over to you, how team. Tom, maybe you want to start by introducing you. Absolutely. Thanks for, for the intro. Hi, everybody. Um, and welcome to our webinar on uh, moving beyond traditional ATP SMS monetization. Uh, and, and really, we're going to look at how to build a road to sustainable uh, revenue growth. Uh, today, you've got myself, Tom Barter, current marketing director here at Horde. Got, of course, Joanna Kulogoska, head of uh, market intel and then Ron Benici, VP of Products. I don't know, if, do you want to uh, give you a, a small introduction yourselves? Um, yeah, good uh, afternoon. Um, <clears throat> my name is Joanna Kulikowska. I head up uh, Global Market Intelligence at the Hall. Really pleased to be here today and um, yeah, looking forward for this discussion. Hi everyone, uh, I'm Ron Bonici. I've been at Hall six years plus now. Uh, I had the product team and features team. So I'm also very excited and thrilled to share my experience on this webinar today. Brill. So let's get jump, let's let's just jump straight into it. So a, a question to you, Joanna, let's kick it off. So essentially many of you um, here who are on the webinar uh, have increased your ATP SMS revenue, uh, your prices in the last three years. In fact, probably this year alone. Um, Joanna, what effect has this had on the industry? Um, yeah, thanks, Tom. That certainly has been a, a big surge in um, uh, A2P pricing over the last uh, two years, uh, and especially last year. Um, I just want to put it into perspective that the um, average international MNO termination rate increased um, in the last two years from um, um, three, a little over three um, dollar cents to almost double. Um, so over six cents. Um, so on average, the international termination rate uh, globally by market increased by 66%, but in some specific countries, geographies, uh, even well over 100%. That obviously uh, has an effect on the industry as a whole. Um, so the the main trends, the main effects that we have seen, of course, is uh, that um, higher um, the price increases and higher rates really incentivize um, bypass through a uh, gray routes. Um, and the race of grey routes, especially through um, SIM boxes uh, in markets where SIM boxes are actively present. Um, there has also been um, a shift um, in uh, uh, into some alternative channels, alternative to SMS. I will um, name here, obviously, voice channels as very prominent in the last uh, yeah, so voice OTPs have shift of um, verification use cases into voice OTP authentication, a flash call authentication, uh, but also uh, moving into other channels, non-SMS, non-voice based uh, OTT channels, uh, for instance, uh, in specific geographies where for this could be into WhatsApp or some other uh, OTT, OTTs that have significant presence and penetration in respective markets. Uh, other trends that I can mention here is that that um, uh, in, uh, in some markets where the rate has increased significantly, there has been a further erosion of um, uh, on some use cases, especially of a lower priority use cases, uh, which resulted in uh, what we see today, in, especially on the international A2P side, is that the main uh, use case on the international A2P side is verification. It's actually estimated as uh, announced by uh, uh, mobile squared recently at around 90%. So 90% of the international traffic is now contributed to authentication. That, of course, uh, brings a big dependency of the international A2P on the verification use case. And the last trend that um, I want to mention, which obviously uh, is, a, is a result of, uh, of those price increases, is that um, 
it has had a big impact on the brands and what they spend on ATP SMS. And because there has been an impact to their budgets, we're talking about an increase of 100% in some markets, especially in large markets, it has a big impact on the budgets uh, of, um, of big enterprises. Uh, the enterprises started reviewing uh, the use cases um, and potentially uh, looking into yeah, dropping, uh, reducing traffic into specific use cases uh, that they're using A2P for. It's really interesting. Ron, what are your views on, um, on, on the new forms of authentication? Yeah, I agree with Joanna. I think the pricing is the main culprit here, right? So it created a lot of, uh, it created an avalanche of theft, you know? So uh, we've seen uh, the AIT, the trashing, and then brands reacting to that, you know, some group, uh, like Joanna mentioned, cases being dro uh, dropped, the traffic going down, you know? So all this is a uh, reaction to the pricing that has been uh, going on these last few years, you know, and then we see also a shift towards flash calls, which is basically one of the topics, I think, hot topics that has been discussed lately. And uh, I mean, as you know, HOD have, has already developed a solution, which we can talk maybe a bit later on the flash call uh, part, you know, but still, this is to continue to monetize and uh, uh, increase the revenues when it comes to, to the SMS part. So uh, I think, again, like I said, is the pricing there, we need to get it right. Yeah, absolutely. And that, we all know that uh, a price increase is basically the first step to, to true monetization, right? So the, the, the real problem we see in the market is, is, is that obviously costs can, can rise, use cases are being eroded. So Joanna, what's the right way of implementing a price increase? Um, uh, we very often get this question from our customers, and that's something that, uh, you know, me, myself and my team, we work very closely with um, our customers and partners. So when looking to increase um, the rate for, for the A to B SMS termination, uh, mobile uh, operators should um, um, firstly consider their specific market elasticity, um, taking into account um, the, the market size and the, the, the specific operator market share as well. Um, and looking into what are the other MNOs in the market already uh, charging for SMS termination. Um, and we can talk about a few scenarios here. We might be looking at the operator that is currently not monetizing um, at the market rate. So um, increasing the rate is less disruptive in a way because the market rate is already at a certain rate. So uh, uh, the operator is following the market trend. But of course, if we're talking about being a pioneer in price increase, that has to be uh, you know, done with caution. Um, and um, also uh, looking into um, this intelligence, this global intelligence, what are other regions, similar regions, similar economies are charging for A to P termination is very important. And also looking into the, the, the respective traffic profiles as well, uh, it's important to see have they seen any uh, sp significant traffic erosion, any specific erosion in, um, in some use cases. That might be the indication that the rate is already at a very high point and the traffic is not increasing, um, but decreasing if you will. Um, and the next thing to really take into account is the, so, so to speak, go-to-market strategy with this price increase. Um, and the right way, so nowadays the, the brands are really looking, we spoke about the, the, the budget impact on the brands, so the brands are really looking into pricing stability. Um, because of that frequent price increase is really impacting the budgets. It is um, important to uh, make sure that the price changes and the market shifts are communicated well in advance so that um, that the, the, the wholesale industry and the market, including also the, the brands itself, can prepare and plan for that uh, market increase. Um, as you know, the sudden price increases in our experience and observations, they tend to, in a way, disrupt the market and create a panic mode that really incentivizes uh, a lot of um, bad behavior such as traffic trashing and dumping the traffic and uh, um, to avoid for instance uh, making um, a loss in the trading environment and that of course impacts uh, subscriber experience yeah it's, it's really interesting I, I find how 
uh, a, a simple price increase can can impact so many different uh, stakeholders. So, uh, and on that note, Ron, what kind of uh, stakeholders should you really consider when you when you're implementing a price increase? Very good question, Tom. Uh, yeah, I think first and foremost, let's keep in mind the new channels, right, that are coming and launching new business uh, pricing models. You know, like we have the WhatsApp lately have launched their own pricing model. We have uh, Viber, we have RCS, and we have, don't forget, Apple Business Chat as well. So all these, which are already providing brand uh, messaging, right? So it's kind of, a, now it's kind of a free market, right? So it's a price war. Okay, so who can win this is based on the right pricing strategy. So again, it is very important and vital that we as stakeholders in the SMS business, especially um, messaging business have the right pricing strategy. How can we define this pricing strategy? So um, there needs to be a framework, right? Based on the market data that John has shared, right? And uh, first and foremost, again, let's keep in mind that uh, any disruption, any increase, Obviously, brands will look at they have budgets like everybody else at every other company, you know, so they want to stick to their budget. As soon as they hit a certain threshold, they will look elsewhere. So again, pricing stability, you know, you have to say have certain level of commitments with these with these brands, you know, to keep um, keep them uh, as stable as possible. I don't believe that there should be a one size fits all strategy. So. There needs to be, um, again, depending on the market you are operating in, so the market economy, the elasticity that Joanna um, uh, mentioned. The subscribers are who needs to be considered as well, right? With the country, where are we doing business? Is the country purchasing power, you know, the standard of living of that particular country, for example, you no? Know? So, for example, even for the domestic brands, um, how to sell the enterprise. And uh, even the message per se, you need to put a value on that message. So. Am I protecting something? Am I protecting my bank account? Am I protecting my social media? Or even healthcare, you know? So all of this have different um, uh, weight to the whole pricing strategy, in my opinion. And uh, finally, I would say, like, uh, like again, I mean, no big secret what's up are doing, and we've been preaching this for quite some time now, right? Uh, differentiate charging. So you have to put different pillars, right? So you put these type of messages under different categories, and then you could, Really put some value on these particular uh, on these messages, basically. So, what I really want to know right now is then, uh, how do you know that you've reached a, a price ceiling? What are the symptoms? Um, first of all, the traffic is not growing anymore, yeah, or even dropping. So, uh, one of the symptoms would be definitely if an operator is experiencing traffic drop. Uh, that's an imminent uh, signal that, uh, you know, there has been a um, change and that can be related to pricing, of course. Um, there are some uh, other signals that are maybe a little bit more difficult <laughs> to spot and less imminent. Um, so definitely increased bypass and fraud. Uh, it's not a, a secret that if the rate increases, there's a bigger incentive for the wholesale community to try to find any leakage and any loopholes in the network vulnerabilities and expose and misuse them. Um, and also there is uh, very often this behavior of um, yeah. and these days we see traffic mm -hmm. trashing even that it's not so easy um, to spot and blending with uh, uh, non-working routes. Um, um the the other symptom is we, i spoke about this uh, uh just a moment ago when when an operator sees a decay or erosion of some specific uh traffic streams um namely traffic coming from the brands that may be sort of a lower priority so again we're talking about this dependency on the verification on the two the FAs the OTP messages and the notification sort of more marketing content and engagement re-engagement content is starting to disappear and shift into uh, other channels yeah and those channels can be for example for instance a brand shifting into email I mean email still you know, these days is the biggest uh, channel for business communication Communication. Um, as much as we like to think SMS is huge, this email that is the the uh, the brand's champion, yeah, and but also other uh, channels. Uh, um, 
mobile uh, mobile operator channels such as the voice and uh, we spoke about voice OTP and, and flash calling and uh, then there is the OTT channel as well so um, these are the symptoms um, that are maybe not so easy for every operator to see but these are the symptoms that uh, are clearly alluding to the fact that the rate is already at uh, the high level Ron is there a way to spot these symptoms at all uh, yeah, it's it's a, it's a continuous work, right? So um, uh, from our end, we have different teams. So we have our many services team, which actually is always on the go testing these markets we are in, right? So looking at uh, testing the application, you know, looking at the performance, different behaviors, okay? As soon as they spot something new that is recorded to the product team, you know, and together with our R&D, we'll look into um, these new threats. Okay, for example, flash calls behavior has been changing lately, you know, some uh, stuff like this. On top of that, obviously, we have our uh, business intelligence and our analytic tools, okay, which uh, again, based on the information that we receive together with some data sets that we have, we um, process, right, and come up with different type of trends, market trends. Okay, and uh, on top of that, in the, what we're doing at the moment as well, Always enhancing is basically trying to categorize as much as possible this traffic to see and be able to uh, analyze right uh, the traffic uh, legitimacy, okay, the channels that is being received from and uh, the different type of behavior of uh, certain certain numbers, right, and the ID. So. Uh... And I can see that we've got a few uh, a few questions coming into the Some chat. Some interesting questions, I think. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> perhaps we'll uh, we'll come on to them in uh, in just a minute. But uh, here's a bold question. First of all, uh, should we move away from the concept that an SMS firewall is just for protecting subscribers? Is it now more of a, an enforcement tool to enable monetization? Can I jump on that? Go on. I think it's one of my favorite questions. Um, uh, Mm, used to be very different before. Nowadays, um, uh, they are equally important, important, right? So intrinsically linked, we call them. So this because um, yeah, one leads to the other, right? So we've seen smishing rising, especially during COVID times, you know. So um, I don't say that this should be only for monetization or only for security. I think you need to have a firewall. You need to make sure that the operator has a firewall that can handle both. Right, and on top of that, if you can, which also gives you additional benefit, if you can differentiate the charging, then you have different use cases that you can actually put on top of that. Um, I think I answered your question. I don't think that we should call this a firewall on enforcement. One solution for me too. Yeah. Okay. This is super interesting. Thanks, Ron. So uh, before we move away from price increases, because it's such a hot topic. Um, We've got a few questions. First of all, could you please clarify who performs SMS traffic pumping and trashing? Is it the aggregators? I don't know. Maybe, Ron, you can comment. Maybe I, I can maybe start. Uh, the, when it comes to SMS traffic pumping, uh, there are different terminologies these days in the market being used, artificial inflation of traffic. Um, there are different types of this inflation that can happen in the market. Um, there is this sort of a natural... Uh, inflation of ATP SMS that is coming from um, from the social media bot industry um, uh, that is uh, happening a bit outside of our industry and uh, our industry has been benefit in a way benefiting from this increase of traffic because obviously you can buy uh, a follower or a million followers for uh, not a lot of money these days in most of the social media platforms so these are fake accounts that don't have any apple for the ott so that's one way some traffic inflation can happen but there has been the behavior of will be very often referred to traffic pumping that is um driven by the wholesale industry and there are some um, aggregators or wholesale uh, players in the value chain that uh, um, are responsible for the generation of the traffic and they're, they're, again that they can be very different it's very interesting maybe i'll let ron comment a little bit as mm -hmm. he's much more technical than me uh, what kind of scenarios maybe do we see uh, on the ait side ron yeah i mean uh 
we can go into that. Uh, I think the main thing that we need to discuss here is again, I, the having the right pricing strategy, right? So uh, as soon as wholesale company aggregator who has commitments and all of a sudden um, there's a disruption, they have to fulfill those commitments, you understand? So even if sometimes uh, certain commitments are not reachable, you know, so even comes a bit on the operator side to have a more realistic targets, right? A realistic strategy here. Okay, so there are different types of uh, artificial, artificial traffic inflation, you know, so um, bots sending and receiving messages, some of these are being trashed, so the aggregator keeps the money. You know, we've also seen in uh, past uh, webinars or some, some other competitors have shared that, for example, you can also inflate traffic or charge extra for premium rated numbers, for example, you know, so you send messages and then you receive these kind of messages at a higher rate, right? So all these activities, the various activities to continue to increase the revenue. But I, then again, if the pricing is right, you try to minimize as much as possible uh, these uh, these uh, attacks, right, or threats. You know? And if I can add something here, I know that we we should move on. We have other uh, topics, but it's very interesting. So when we um, look at um, what happened in the market uh, in the last, uh, how the market has changed, is that a lot of operators started implementing SMS firewalls, and a lot of um, operators also uh, took the route to um, sort of uh, outsource the outsource or appoint um, single gateways, so single point of entries into the network. Um, and that obviously is a very lucrative uh, sort of arrangement for any uh, aggregator that wants to have this purchase power of collecting traffic for, for a single market. Obviously, there is a lot of competition in this space. So uh, these contracts uh, tend to expire within 12 or 12 months, the commitments, and then there has to be another party who has to come with a higher commitment in a way. And in order to win a certain exclusivity, uh, when the operator already has been monetizing the traffic um, that is fully present, sometimes uh, the only way is to commit to more revenue. And sometimes this revenue uh, is generated artificially. So to answer the question of Laurentius, it's, it's mainly SMS aggregators who are responsible for the SMS traffic pumping. Why why have prices increased so much? Maybe 20 seconds. It's easy to increase the revenue, uh, right? <laughs> yeah, I think because it's the easiest way to increase the revenue is simply to increase the price. So as we know, operators are uh, and big there are big enterprise organizations that have budgets and quotas every year. So uh, the A2P revenue line is maybe not so significant in the greater uh, in the greater portfolio of operator services. So the easiest way to go forward and increase the revenue by X percent is basically to uh, charge for the asset X percent more. So that is the main driver why the pricing has increased. But basically, operators don't see other easier easy ways to achieve greater revenues from that particular asset. Um, so we we've kind of discussed how price increases are a, are a great a great way to start off your monetization strategy, get it up and running. But um, as we've discussed, every message has a price ceiling. So how can we move beyond the crutch of just continuous price increases? Mm. Yeah, I think <laughs> just for I said, the operators have to, in a way, stop looking at simply increasing rates as the uh, only way to increase the revenues coming from the SMS channel. Uh, so when we look at the SMS uh, as mobile operator asset, even though it's a, I mean, it's a relatively old technology, the pricing model is, is very outdated. It's simply transactional charge, uh, transactional charge that does not reflect uh, the complexity and the use cases and the value that the uh, the, uh, the channel brings. So we strongly believe that operators need to look into new pricing models following the other uh, business messaging channels and uh, looking to reflect, or actually to increase the elasticity of pricing uh, uh, of A2P messaging to really reflect the value. Um, and as well to reduce the dependency of the um, A2P on the verification use case and to stimulate 
creating new use case uh, for when at the moment SMS is not being used for. Mm. Um, but we, because the potential is there, it's clearly there, yes. Uh, even though we're talking about uh, the market incre increasing and increasing year on year, for what is now estimated at, I think, 5% on average globally, we need to remember that it's still a relatively niche channel because only less than 10% of businesses are, are using A2P SMS as a channel for business communication. So the potential is huge, but in order to compete with the other um, with the other channels, such as email, I mean, I spoke about uh, email maybe 10 minutes ago, the, it's just the, the charge is, 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 is not comparable at all, yeah? So that therefore, mm -hmm. SMS needs to adapt the pricing model. Yeah, if, if, if I'm continuing on this, I think the previous question ties well with this, right? Uh, we talked about adding the revenues because that's the easy way. I believe that the um, operator needs to be, um, yeah, having more uh, a long-term messaging strategy, and I call it messaging strategy, right? So it's not only an SMS strategy. So as we um, highlighted, right? So there are different type of use cases that uh, potentially, if the operator has the aptitude, right, to do this, there could potentially be a huge amount of messages, SMS messages, that those use cases which are missing. I'll give you an example, all right? Personal example happened to me a few days ago. I was in an airline flight. I was at uh, one of the airports, right, in Rome. And uh, we've been hit by a uh, storm and the plane landed in a different airport. Um, you can imagine, we're waiting at the gate. I receive an SMS stating, oh, your flight has been diverted to Fiumicino because of the bad weather. But I was one of the few who actually received the message. The others were all anxious, what's happening here, what's happening here, you know? So you can imagine the anxiety and the brand not reaching out to the Customers, what happened to their flight? It's seven o'clock in the evening. It's seven o'clock. There's no flight happening. We we were not being informed what is happening. You know, so um, that message has a lot of value. Okay, to top that up is that the fly airline, right, um, did send me in fact um, a message not only on my SMS but only in my uh, as well in my application and in my email. However. Being a person, a geek like I am, um, I hate notifications on my phone because they clutter my screen. I don't really want to be disturbed as much as possible. So I turn off these notifications. So I couldn't have seen neither the email nor the in app uh, message, you know. And these use cases happen every time. I'm sure everybody here has encountered these. I had the same experience with a fintech company, for example. I started a discussion on a chatbot. I left the chatbot, and all of a sudden, an hour later, I remember, and the session has been closed. Imagine the frustration, you know? So all these builds up, you know? A simple message, which costs nothing to the enterprise, could easily, um, uh, you know, um, satisfy or engage customers, um, brands, customers, and keep them more happy, I believe. I can, so I can see that you're like... <laughs> Uh, really enthusiastic about this, Ron. Uh, I'm, I'm yeah, probably more from your experience this this weekend. <laughs> with, uh... Yeah, across across. I mean, happened uh, to us as well in in I mean, in one of these cities, right in London, and when we were booking for a table, and they messaged us that the table is ready. You know, so they didn't lose the table. I did not lose my appointment. I could easily free roam around the the London city, you know, without having to queue for an hour. For the table, you know, these customer experiences are priceless, you know, because I'm sure the um, uh, the restaurant has made much more money than these SMS you know. So, and that's when we talk about the value, yeah, that the exactly. message brings to the brand. Uh, just yeah, super interesting. That's why SMS has such a big potential uh, to grow. Um, but yes, the and the, the price, the operator, though, right? and the price the that the brand is willing to pay, isn't it? And exactly. reflecting the value. Yeah, absolutely. I agree 100%. So hopefully that answered your question as well around uh, what would uh, alternative business use cases be. Um, so, Joanna, let's say you've got uh, an next-gen firewall in place. Of course, holds next-gen firewall in place. Um, 
what sort of uh, this this gives you visibility of, of relevant customer across your network, of course. So, what sort of granular uh, uh, data? What sort of a level of data should you be looking at? Uh, how do you use this data? So. Once you have the visibility of what's passing through your network, you can then categorize all the messages passing through, passing through, yeah? So you see uh, to a very detailed granularity of what the brands, what type of uh, patterns, categories are the brands sending. Uh, so you might see uh, traffic coming from one connection and one brand that um, is sending um, ODP, but also engagement traffic, marketing traffic. So these messages can be all um, categorized in the system and, uh, and, and as a result, uh, reported on and uh, charged and built at a different rate. So for instance, uh, let's take an example. Perhaps an operator can take a decision um, that, uh, and please do not hold me responsible uh, on the rates. I'm just putting it in the, in the, in, in the model. So uh, there's a certain brand and uh, maybe let's say Amazon, yeah, for instance, um, and the Amazon is uh, paying, uh, it's okay to pay nine cents for an OTP message. Um, and then uh, for the same brand, Amazon, can be charged for very different type of messages, such as maybe abandoned uh, cart notification. So, hey, you, you didn't check out your purchase, which is still a relatively valuable use case for a brand um, trying to incentivize the, the customer to go back and actually buy something. So they can maybe charge uh, a lower rate. Maybe it's a, say six cents is acceptable. Like I said, the number is just an, um, uh, an example here. And then, and then there are the other lower marketing use cases, um, such as uh, uh, promotional traffic or some kind of uh, uh, marketing engagement that this rate will just not fly simply for the brand. But this, these can also be categorized and, and charged in the, uh, whether very simple models or quite complex models. And maybe Ron can talk, talk about uh, yeah, a bit more about the, the actual uh, complexity of differentiated pricing, but it can be as simple as just um, charging different um, price points for different categories of messages, or it can be more complex as well, Ron, isn't it? Yeah, um, in fact, I mean, this was one of the uh, big headaches, right, for categorization. Um, we've seen a lot of, uh, how can I say, oh, we had to overcome issues like the content privacy issue, right? So we, knew, we cannot look at the content. So we have developed a categorization, I call it categorization box, right? So it's an AI, AI box based on machine learning. So we feed this box with different uh, data sets, right? Various data sets from uh, different sources, okay? To come up with different categorization um, uh, categories, basically. Yeah, so that's what we do. And this categorization box, we use it both with the our enforced solution, right, for protecting and monetizing and securing the network, and then also for our exchange, which is the trading wholesale platform, right? So as Joanna is mentioning here, especially when it comes to differentiated uh, charging. Okay, so we categorize different traffic, um, and accordingly, there would be a price tag, a, um, price tag assigned to each and different category. Um, another thing that we, we are doing is basically uh, for certain, we know, for example, EU, right? The data privacy issue is quite uh, on top of the agenda. Thus, uh, how we are categorizing is based on registering sample tax, for example. Yeah, so there's different pricing models that you can adopt based on when you onboard new brands or enterprises. Um, yeah, so there are different methods how we are um, tackling this this on um, different different type of uh, uh, solutions, basically. What solutions? So th th those are real re real uh, useful practical steps to 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 sort of consider when 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 thinking about differentiated pricing. But really, how do we uh, take differentiated pricing to market? What are the complexities involved in running direct to brand SMS operations and controlling your network traffic more directly? Mm -hmm. Uh, as, as, as I explained, I mean, um, uh, you need to have all this. Uh, you need to have we have we call it the A2P monetized uh, monetization solution suite, right? So 
you need to have the right technology in different areas. So basically, uh, when you are to enforce, you need to have proper enforcement, right? And as Joanna mentioned, we categorize the traffic, uh, international, domestic, different type of brand sets. There's a lot of business rules, right, that we implement in the in the machine to make sure that the traffic is flowing from the correct channels. But that's not only for enforcement and to charge is basically to say, listen, if this is of this type, then you can apply this type of charge. You know, so these are all different permutations that you can do um, on the on the actual uh, platform. Okay. Interesting. Joanna, jo anything to add on that? Yeah, I think the technology piece is very important because uh, you ask about the challenges that the, uh, that the yeah, what are the challenges, complexities involved uh, with running um, direct uh, campaigns. So it's just, even though you know the MNOs have a really incredible brand value that is uh, recognized by enterprises internationally and globally, they are traditionally not so well equipped to uh, serve the enterprise There's simply it's not their core business uh, therefore uh, you know that ideal scenario whereas our MNO is connected directly to the brand and there is direct engagement and direct conversation is not uh, not always the case so the operators rely uh, on SMS aggregators to bring the traffic in because there's just simply also too many brands in the world for an operator to connect mm -hmm. and even the, there's a complexity for MNO to uh, uh, manage many aggregators. Um, some operators therefore simplify it and try to limit the number of partners to two, three, one, ten, you know, depending on what actually their wholesale team can uh, manage, yes, because operators have relatively small uh, resources usually dedicated to this specific uh, yeah, PNL, if you will, and there is complexity managing a wholesale business uh, without uh, the right solution in place. Yeah, that's uh, starting from simply signing the agreement to establishing the connection, but then. Uh, visibility of the traffic, routing of the traffic, billing and invoicing. Um, so yeah, these are not easy uh, for the operators to overcome. And therefore, I agree with you, Ron, this is the, the technology piece in place that makes a, um, a difference here. Cool, oh, thanks. Um, so we've looked at two great ways of, of uh, evolving your monetization strategy, right? We've got the, the first step of price increases, and then we've got a, a more advanced level of uh, differentiated pricing. However, I, I'm really keen to understand uh, in the ever-changing landscape of mobile messaging and SMS, uh, how how is it going to uh, how has it changed in the past year uh, in the past five years? Five years, uh, yeah, a lot of change. Yeah, let me take it up. Since I'm the furniture <laughs> in the messaging industry, so five years would be like half of what I've spend in the industry as I'm I think approaching I think I keep on saying 10 years for a while now so I think I've exceeded the 10 years mark but okay let's not go there what has happened in the last five years so first of all we need to talk about the boom yeah so the pandemic COVID-19 I think we we all said it so many times and uh, but we have to re-emphasize that because of COVID-19 pandemic, like when the whole world turned online, SMS has come, has gone from being sort of a niche channel to a mainstream channel that has uh, gained suddenly a lot of popularity because it was used, but simply was used for critical communication. And that has really turned, uh, uh, turned it to this um, really established, uh, secure, I mean, you know, and trusted, um, channel for critical communication, but also uh, when all the businesses stand online, it was also a very convenient way for businesses to interact with the customers when the shops were closed, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. This rapid di digitalization really uh, has play, play, put a lot of pressure on enterprises to embrace the, you know, mobile first. Uh, so yeah that 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 definitely happens so a lot of operators globally have seen an increase of traffic uh or a2p uh, traffic on domestic on international sites so that has been the big boom i call it the big boom um uh, and that growth continued post pandemic as well but um 
alongside that uh, growth of, of, of use cases that uh, there was also this uh, not negative effect that was the increase in, in fraud and smishing that happened here. Yeah? So everyone turned online uh, as did the fraudsters <laughs> because they also had to find a niche to survive and pro uh, prospects in, the, uh, in this digital uh, situation. So there has been a big search on smishing, uh, flu board. Uh, suddenly SMS gained a lot of negative uh, popularity or fame for being the channel that is, uh, you know, um, insecure or really um, infested by smishing. We have to remember, I think there's an extremely interesting presentation from Nick Lane recently, that even though we talk about fraud and fraud is very close to our hearts in the industry, SMS is still a relatively clean channel if we compare to email and other channels. But yes, there has been a lot of uh, fraud and so it, uh, the result of this was the operators started taking actions to protect their subscriber, meaning they started implementing firewalls, anti-spamming solutions, different type of solutions to reduce um, that impact of fraudulent messages on their subscribers. Um, another trend is that uh, MNOs have started or uh, have been realizing the A2P revenue oppor opportunity more and more. And uh, that therefore they started implementing monetization strategies um, also because of uh, uh, you know, st trends such as uh, the roaming traffic being very impacted in pandemic data going down. A2P was the only growing channel out of their assets. Therefore, they, they, they definitely uh, put more attention to it and consider it more strategically. Um, there, then another, um, going back to this, this trend, then we've seen operators implementing uh, firewalls and monetization strategies. And definitely the trend in the last three, four years is so more and more operators started implementing uh, sort of commitment models, exclusive partnership models. We've seen, uh, I've spoke about this before, but th th that was definitely another trend. And then I think we covered quite uh, well today especially in the last two years, the rates inc started increasing as a knockdown effect of this, uh, especially on the international side, but in some markets also on domestic side. Um, and we spoke about the uh, effects of it. Um, uh, but if I would look back for um, take the pricing aside, maybe the last 12 12, uh, 16 months, it's definitely been a big search and uh, this bad behaviors, uh, artificial traffic inflation, uh, trashing, blending, those uh, more um, impactful uh, wholesale fraud types. That I think that's summarize my take. I mean, five years is a lot to cover, so I try to focus on the major trends. But yes, it's an ever-changing dynamic market. So I only try to highlight the the big trends I've, I've seen, but I could probably talk for 10 hours about this. <laughs> Thanks, Joanna. Ron, it's time to get out your crystal ball then. I'll flip the question <laughs> on, on, on the other way. Oh, so, you get the future question, thank yeah, God. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so what what do you predict will will uh, will happen in, in the next five, 10 years even? Easier to predict the past, John, than the future. Um, yes. yeah, but we see you still enthusiastic about this, uh, this, this market of change. Yeah, um, uh, let's start with what I would like to see personally, right? So, I mean, with what future would bring and what would be nice to have. So it would nice be nice to have one kind of expert application where I can have um, all my loyalty cards because I have, like I said, I don't know how, how many apps, I don't know how many cards, and then um, my wallet separately, stuff like that, you know? I've seen this before, right? So. Uh, you have everything in there. You have your tickets. I can go buy my ticket, you know, put it directly in my wallet so I can go to the airport, show them my ticket. Everything is hassle free. We know now time is of the essence, as we say, right? So as we go, I mean, time is, be, is, is also value. Um, so even to communicate directly with the brand over there, you know, receive op, 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 uh, promotions, I can complain easily there, you know, stuff like that. So how can we achieve this though, right? So um, I would like to dissect this, right? So there are different type of technologies. There's a massive amount of uh, different type of levels that we have to look into. 
right? So let's start from the messaging point and I call it messaging, yeah? So I believe messaging will continue to grow, right? So um, I think that is the favorite, at least for me and a lot of people that I know is the most, uh, I mean, this is the favorite way to, to interact with the brands, you know, messaging is the easiest way, you know? So SMS is there and I think will remain for quite some time if again, as we said earlier, we are able to put the right use cases in place. Okay, I think SMS is here to stay for the long time. Okay, so apply differentiate charging and that would be my first um, uh, point. Second point, as I said, customer preference, different type of interactions, different type of channels than we're talking about the omni-channel, right? So you need to have a platform that enables you to have different type of channels to can, you can reach out to the, to the, from the brand to the customer and the customer to the brand on different type of channels. So that is something that also needs to be taken into consideration. That's point my point number two. Point number three would be to identify who's behind the device. So uh, you need to verify who's actually doing this transaction, who's behind the, the actual mobile device. You know, need to verify it and authenticate this person. Now we're also talking about the metaverse, you know, so verification is also becoming um, quite important. That's my point number three. And finally, um, something that we've seen that even GSMA are trying to push is for operator to remain relevant I believe they need to provide additional value to the brands. And how can they do this? I personally believe coming from uh, 16 years of uh, experience in a mobile operator company, um, they're sitting off on a lot of data, right? So within the limits, within the limits of the data privacy, but I believe the network operators have data that they can provide back to the brands to provide additional value, okay? And that would be, um, brand, oh, sorry, operators remain relevant in this whole value chain. And that would be my point number four. <laughs> Thanks, Lisa. Did it's I just... summarize? Yeah, yeah, I love it. I, lo I absolutely love it. So, good question, Mal. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, there's, there's a lot of opportunities out there and a, a lot of opportunities from other channels. Um, but I think it's really important to start with uh, the current hot topics. So I'm going to bring it up. Let's start with flash calls. Um, how can this be an opportunity to monetize? Ah, it's an interesting question. It's flash call, very, like you said, it's a very hot topic uh, right now, but it's uh, not. Uh, it's not easy at the moment for operators to monetize it. This is because it's a highly unregulated, very gray area at the moment when we talk about flash calls. Some say that. Flash call is uh, how ATP was um, 10 or 15 years ago, but I, I, I don't quite agree. But yes, there's a lot of um, there's a lot of uh, question marks and uncertainties around flash call. Uh, first of all, it's uh, not considered uh, as fraud by any regulations, so it's not something that operator can easily just uh, even detect, but not easily blocked. It has uh, in, in the view of some regulators, some operators, it, uh, it uh, reassembles maybe some types of voice fraud, but it's at the moment not classified uh, at all as, uh, for instance, fraudulent. Therefore, there's no framework or it's not classified as a transaction such as SMS or MMS or RCS. It's, it's a flash call. It's a missed call. We call it flash call in the industry because that's the terminology we adapted uh, for obviously the CPAS players who are offering that uh, as a verification method. Yeah. And because most of the operators are un unable to, to see it or detect it or distinguish what is a flash call, what is a missed call, what is a voice call, is quite complex, obviously. Uh, therefore, it's not charged and they don't have the easy ability to charge that type of traffic. Where again, there's no framework for it. So, and because of that, it's close to, close to free of charge for the brands to use or for the aggregators to, uh, to, to sell which means that obviously it's at the moment treated as a point of leakage and point of bypass to deliver traffic to the networks. Now, the interesting question is, what if the operators can actually detect 
and charged as uh, will this still be such a and charges for instance at the same level they are charging as a verification transaction a similar rate as sms will it still be such a relevant uh, channel because when we look at the experience of the flash call for verification it's not necessarily seamless um because it is fragmented uh, between the different operating systems here yeah? so like i said some operators are, are taking uh, measurements to maybe detect it or block it but we don't see operators at the moment really globally at a larger scale monetizing it but it can certainly become an opportunity so what's the that's the theory um but what's the reality what's the approach holder taking with this wrong uh, i mean um we have developed our own flash calls not flash calls over right so it's a voice otp solution and it's more of a voice fraud um uh, solution i think we need to bring, build a framework around that's another framework right so um uh, start from as Joanna said, you need to have an ATP voice agreement, you know, so what would be the agreement here? So that needs to start. That's the first thing, you know. Uh, secondly, then you need to be able to profile this call. So our solution, how does it work? So basically, um, the way we developed it is that we have a detection platform, right, with different profiles, with different voice profiles, we call them, right? So what makes a flash call? What makes a voice OTP? And uh, these different uh, characteristics that actually defines a flash call. Since we've been in uh, operations, we have also seen changes in the behavior of a flash call. So the way, again, as, as I mentioned, is that we can load different type of profiles of the same type of activity. You know, so I say um, different markets might have different type of uh, uh, behaviors. Okay, so. The solution is quite uh, dynamic to be able to load different profiles. And obviously, the next step, step would be to detect these, right? Because without detection, you can't really charge it. You need to make sure you detect it to make sure that you can charge it accordingly. Okay. And on top of that, then you need to have an enforcement because I need to make sure that if I'm starting to charge flash calls now, I don't have any leakages, you know? So that is the solution. And on top of that, Okay, we also provide, um, well, we need to provide as well billing and invoicing, right? So you need to bill and invoice accordingly based on different type of um, traffic. So being the SMS, being voice, you know, different type of uh, uh, traffic. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Ron. Um, we're almost we're almost there, but um, I, I think it'd be uh, amiss not to discuss or, or very quickly raise uh raise whatsapp of course so um mm -hmm. it, it, whatsapp is, is another channel which is featuring in discussions around the world at the minute so could you set the scene about this uh potential threat joanna um yeah whatsapp is uh my, i think my, my main uh, favorite <laughs> topics to talk these days it's definitely the fastest growing uh rich media um which which uh, messaging channel as uh, reported uh, i mean by all the main analysts of the industry there has been a big uh, search in the adoption of whatsapp globally i mean i think we're talking well over two billion users these days which makes it uh, it's a very rich channel easy to use people are most geographies are are I'm very much used to it. Uh, it, it is facing uh, still uh, fragmentation in some markets, but it's already a very, very large channel and rich. <clears throat> um, so it's it's an important um, part of the, the CPAS, obviously, strategy. And if we are looking at uh, what WhatsApp have been doing, of course, it's a big, big, big topic covered uh, uh, very uh, much in different sessions. Is this uh, the change of the pricing model uh, into uh, the use case, the value-based uh, uh, charging model that also lists authentication as one of the uh, use cases? It obviously makes it an imminent rival or con uh, competitor to uh, humble ATP and an interesting one as well. So obviously how this will, um, how the adoption will um, 
evolve. We have to see like all the technologies uh, take time to adopt, but uh, what we know uh, from WhatsApp's behavior and uh, the strategy, they, they seem to be displaying. So they're quite uh, um, now focused on uh, further expanding their and strengthening their position in the business messaging industry. So also uh, talking, uh, talking or approaching the brands directly and actively promoting um, their channel. Um, but I have to mention here that what we have been seeing uh, a lot is that the WhatsApp as any other channel is not immune to fraud. So we've seen uh, a surge of um, uh, termination using um, WhatsApp, but that's not uh, through the WhatsApp uh, official business uh, APIs. It's more of a sandbox like um, behavior on WhatsApp. And uh, I think in, across all the markets, well, certainly here in UK, uh, there has been a big search on smishing as well uh, on WhatsApp and all kinds of uh, spam. And that uh, puts uh, also uh, WhatsApp under certain scrutiny yeah, on how will they enforce security uh, on the channel that is, uh, let's face it, uh, encrypted um, by design. Ron, can we turn this into a monetization opportunity? Good question. Uh, continue, I'll continue with what Joanna was saying. I mean, uh, we've mentioned this multiple times, yes. So any communication channel, especially those which are trusted by the users, are still subject to these type of threats, right? So um, I think if you look at I mean, you should not look at people like us who are used in this business, right? So we know what a sender ID is. I know I can verify that a message has been received from um, a verified brand. You have to look at people like my parents, for example. No, they wouldn't know that this has been sent by Uber verified uh, sender ID or by any other type of uh, sender ID. So, um, and it's going to be hard, as Jonah said, to especially for end-to-end -end encryption to, to enforce this. To top it off is the fact that now there's uh, the pricing models in place. So mm -hmm. this, this potentially will give rise to these kind of um, fraudulent activities. Okay, How can we monetize? WhatsApp, it's WhatsApp. I mean, as I mentioned earlier, this is now a free market. Everybody's offering the same, ser same service, right? So this happens across the world. There's, I mean, you have multiple restaurants, you know? How can you provide additional value? That is the thing that we need to look at. So how can SMS be more or any type of uh, native messaging? And I will stress on the native um, messaging, give more value to the customer, you know? And then it becomes, again, as we mentioned earlier, a pricing war strategy, mm -hmm. you know? so. That's how you can monetize this. I mean, there's, that's that's the reality. Something yeah, but, to keep in mind is um, we travel a lot. I mean, I travel a lot. I don't travel only in Europe. I travel across, right? So um, WhatsApp is data. I don't usually have data in countries where, I mean, data is not found anywhere, everywhere, sorry. You know, so you find yourself sometimes um, SMS is the only actually message that you can receive, you know? so. Also, this can bring, bring more uh, value. Again, I will stop here. I mean, I would always keep in mind the different type of use cases. If we're talking about O2P messaging, or are we talking about additional type of use cases like the notification that we mentioned earlier, promotions, et cetera, et cetera. So all this needs to be um, properly analyzed, done, right? And come up with a proper uh, monetization strategy for the operator. Sorry, Joanna, stop being. Oh, no, no. Yeah, I think, yeah, it's, it's so very valid what you're saying. Uh, I wouldn't, to, I think, um, say the same that we see as in order to. Uh, so, WhatsApp clearly sees a value in offering differentiated pricing for differentiated use cases, which are now being a direct competitor to SMS. I think uh, mobile operators even more so have to consider. And that, that, that they will have to face, especially in the markets where the WhatsApp penetration is very high, competition from um, this uh, very fast growing OTT. Yeah? 
So I appreciate we're running over. So there's, oh, yes, we are. Uh, there, there's, there's a, there's a final, uh, there, there's a final uh, question I want to ask, and uh, it's to really give everybody on the call some, some key takeaways. So if, if perhaps if you can just be a bit more, uh, a little more succinct, but uh, essentially beyond flash calls, beyond WhatsApp, RCS, uh, there's a growing trend of newer bypass techniques and uh, wholesale fraud types, right? So. Um, Lastly, what uh, what proactive steps can a can an MNO and brand and a brands alike uh, take? Um, yeah, I think technology is a key piece, but probably Ron will talk about this more. But I also want to talk about um, you know the the, the in, uh, industry um, we are in is very fragmented, and uh, there are a lot of players that these days, in order to find a niche to survive, they are turning into. Uh, fraud and uh, bad behaviors. I think some um, good uh, practices that the operators can take is to really uh, make sure they enter the partnership with, partnerships with the right partners, the partners that have the same objective in mind, and that is to uh, continue growing SMS as a sustainable channel for brands to use for business communication. Uh, and that means um, also um, a bit more control enforcement and regulation <clears throat> imposed for presenting this bad behaviors and we've seen it in some markets already i think uh, we see in a lot of um now uh requests for proposals or contracts with uh, operators they are applying certain rules uh, for aggregators to follow and uh, you know um, with uh, penalties or uh, disconnection clauses if those um, are abused or you know if, uh, if those uh, rules are not followed I think we have to uh, also um, bring here the recent announcement from BT and then the changes on the UK market uh, uh, so BT has announced a set of rules um, that they have implemented uh, for, uh, you know, their uh, aggregator partners to follow. And they have been very clear, as well as the other UK operators that are limiting the number of partners. So I always like to say that without enforcement, we only have words. So I think the best practices and the codes of conduct, we very often speak on these sessions, they have to finally start being enforced. Uh, but I think technology as well, maybe Ron would like to cover it, so I leave it to you. It's always important to have the right technology in place, right? As you mentioned earlier, it's not only just to have the strategy, you need to, de to employ the strategy, you have to deploy the strategy. And to deploy it, you have to have the right um, uh, type of solution, you know? Uh, so what I also like to add to what John is saying is obviously what is important and we've seen this again from different uh, speeches we were on. So you need to bring as much as possible the brand as closer as possible to the operator. This will give a lot of value. Apart from the fraudulent activities, you can have direct um, uh, negotiations, commitment, relationships, you know, and uh, all these are also are all these types of all sorts of these type of things. Um, finally, obviously, if you want to connect uh, aggregators, make sure that these are the trusted aggregators. You need to make sure that uh, uh, they are connected to a centralized platform because we've been in this business uh, for a long time now. Um, I've seen a lot of networks where you have multiple connection across the network, and it's a nightmare, especially for the engineering team to mm. have proper solution, proper uh, monitoring in place, proper analysis, uh, analysis in place. Uh, so it's important that all these connections are found in one place, okay? And then you can, on top of that, obviously add different type, uh, put the enforcement in place and add the different type of business rules. As I mentioned, now we have like categorization plus business rules, there's the detection, there's the filtering, you can apply sender ID registration mechanisms, content registration, URL registration. So again, technology is important, all right? So important for uh, controlling okay, and managing your, uh, your business. Okay? And then obviously the revenues will grow. Thanks, Ron. Um, thanks. Uh, I think that con kind of concludes uh, 
a, a real insightful session. So um, thanks to everybody who's uh, uh, attending or uh, uh, viewed and participated, asked some great questions. Thanks to you, Joanna, and yourself, Ron. And uh, that's it from Horde, of course. Um, if you have any further questions, do reach out to us, uh, either Joanna or Ron directly, or anyone at, at Horde. Let's hand back to the Carrier community team. Thanks again. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you so much for this great discussion. It was very interesting to listen. And uh, thank you everyone who joined us and uh, watched us live. Also, the session will be available on replay very soon on our CC Media portal. So check it out. And all the best until next time.